Hello, Horus Heresy fans. Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to choose which Legion you want to play for the upcoming Horus Heresy Age of Darkness game. And in particular, my method, the Excel spreadsheet. So, one of the questions I've seen come up uh, more than more than anything else, I think, in groups and on Twitter and in lots of places since the new Horus Heresy game was announced is what Legion should I play? And this is, uh, this is a question for lots of people, you know, lots of people who are new to the game, who've never played Heresy before, or maybe people who've read lots of the books and follow the lore and have decided to jump right in with the plastics release, uh, or in some cases just people who maybe already play Heresy and don't know what to do with the you know, massive 40 new marines in the big Horus Heresy box. Now, I decided to take the plunge into Horus Heresy in about February this year, and you know, at the time of recording this show, um, that it was a couple of months before they announced the new Plastic Heresy box set, and I decided um, to buy some Heresy models to paint them, mostly, so I really like the Alpha Legion, uh, paint scheme and I really like the fact that it's done with Tamiya clear paints which is something I've never tried before so I really fancied painting that colour scheme and I bought myself some headhunters uh, and then obviously I never got around to actually doing it but you know that was the thing that got me into buying some buying some heresy models but when the Age of Darkness uh, game was announced and we saw how much stuff was coming out with it I really started thinking that this might be a thing I'm going to play a lot of and Originally, I decided that I was going to pick up some Tag Martyr, so I picked up some Mechanicum. I saw the robots on Forge World. I thought, this is the army for me. Bought a bunch of them. I painted a couple of them. Really enjoyed painting them. Uh, really leveled up my painting skills, actually. But then we got the announcement that they weren't going to have rules at release. So that sent me into the decision spiral of trying to figure out which Space Marine Legion to play. Now, this is cool. I'm okay with this. I'm really good with this because the Horus Heresy is about Marines. And I think that, you know, particularly looking back at events and the way people have run events in the past, a lot of people did run Marine-only events to really try to give it that Horus Heresy flavor uh, and maybe balance things out a bit because Marines maybe weren't always the best army. Um, so I started thinking about what, what Legion I really wanted to play. Now, I had some sort of front runners for this in my head. I knew I fancied Alpha Legion. I like the models, uh, mostly for the, the models with the scales on them. I really like the color scheme. I really like the sort of the lore that went with Alpha Legion. But I also kind of like Thousand Suns as well. I like the whole Psyker things. I'm into Psykers. I also like the way they were painted and maybe fancy the challenge painting them. I like Salamanders. I've got a 40k Salamanders army. You know, I fancied maybe trying them in Heresy. And I was going around these decisions trying to figure out how can I choose with so much choice and so many things that are cool and so many different factors going into the decision. I was like thinking about it in circles for weeks and it was like taking up all of my thinking time while I was trying to work and while I was trying to do other things and play other games. I was just constantly thinking about what Heresy Legion I'm going to play. And so in the end, being the, you know, science and facts driven type of person that I am, you know, I work in IT, I'm very much about facts and what we know. I actually thought the easiest way to do this might be to make a spreadsheet. So again, I started off with sticking Alpha Legion, Salamander's Thousand Sons into the spreadsheet and trying to compare them. But then I realized that I was probably limiting myself a little bit in doing that because there might be other legions that were kind of cool, that I didn't realize I, I, I might like as much, and you know, when you put all the different factors together, I might like them, so that's how I got onto the methodology that I eventually chose for trying to decide on what legion I'm going to use, and this was only intended to be a guide, it wasn't intended to be the thing that comes out top, I'm going to definitely play, as you'll see, but it was just to sort of like clarify my thoughts and get them down on paper, really, so there's a link uh, in the YouTube um, description to the spreadsheet that I used. It's very, very simple. And I'm going to explain to you how I did it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you copy my uh, exact things that I, I did word for word because this is a very personal choice. And the things that matter to me might not be the same things that matter to you or to the same degree. But it's just a sort of a starting point if you're 
you know, maybe if you're new or if you're trying to pick your second legion or whatever it is, just a way to sort of like get some of your thoughts out on paper and look at them objectively without trying to balance like model coolness versus play style versus all the other different factors. So what I did was, if you have a look at the spreadsheet, I listed out all the legions and I decided on a bunch of categories that mattered to me. And what I decided to do was rate them all. And initially, I decided to rate them 0 or 1. So not, not too granular, not even out of 10. Just a 0 or 1. Is this a thing that matters to me that this Legion are good at or not? And then I decided, actually, I'd rather have three numbers. So I went with 0, 1, and 2. So for each category, if it's a 0, it's something that I'm not really interested in. If it's a 1, it's something that I am interested in, that I like. And if it's a 2, that's something that I'm really interested in. So... As an example, Alpha Legion got a 2 for fluff or lore because I really like the Alpha Legion's lore and I really like the fact that we still don't know whose side they're on by 40k, really. And I really like everything about the Primark and the way they fight. So they got a 2. There was something I'm really interested in doing. Uh, likewise, um, you know, Thousand Suns models got a 2 because I really love the guys with the Kopesh, the, the Circular Sword. I really like the sort of scarab and Egyptian uh, imagery they've got. They kind of they got a two, so that's what a two represents. So really, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to uh, come up with a number in these categories to give me an idea of where each legion sits for me. So I'll tell you about what the categories that I chose were. So the first I chose, as you'll see on the sheet, is paintability. Completely made up word. I think there's a few things that matter to me for painting number one is how much i want to paint the scheme number two is how easy the scheme is to paint as well so they're they're the big things and number three sort of do i think i can paint the scheme in a reasonable amount of time because i'm not a massive hobby guy even though i'm trying to improve my hobby and try new things and painting does excite me nowadays where it maybe didn't 12 months ago for, for certain things but i also know that myself that i don't have the patience to paint an army with tons of detail and tons of models either so i'll give you some examples of how i pointed my guys so alpha legion i've mentioned already they got a two for paintability i love the look i really want to paint it i really want to try out the painting methodology they got a two straight away for me similarly with thousand suns they've got a similar similar tamiya clear method they're a bit metallic which i kind of like they're, they're not too complicated to paint they're not covered in detail they also got a two Dark Angels got a 1. Now, I really, really do want to paint the Dark Angels scheme. It's a thing that I really like. I really like the way they look. I'd love to paint it. I love the whole sort of Knights Templar vibe they've got going on. I like that the majority of their armor is quite dark. But equally, there's a lot of detail on those models. So all the feathers, all the different little bits they have on their armor is a bit more in the 40k direction in terms of complexity. And I don't really want to have to do that for a 30k army. So Dark Angels got a 1, because on balance of things, I did want to paint them, but I wasn't like super excited about painting them. Emperor's Children got a 2, because I really want to paint purple. I've painted purple before, and I really like it. And they're also simplistic, and they've got a bit of metallic on them. They hit all my boxes, so they got a 2. And then there's a bunch of legions that got a 0. Space Wolves, I've owned the Space Wolf army before. All of the heresy colors are a bit different. I just wasn't really interested in painting them. Salamander's got a 0. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I, I really like Salamanders. They're my favourite Legion lore-wise in 40k. I've got an army of them already. I just didn't really fancy painting the darker, more slightly drab Salamanders colour scheme. Plus, they've got a lot of detail on them, which would mean I wouldn't get an army on the table very quickly. So, they actually got a zero, which helps with my decision-making process. Because, as I said before, Salamanders were high on my list. But knowing that there's a part of Salamanders I'm not going to like, as, you know, taking them down a little bit. And then some other legions as well, you know, um, Night Lords, no interest in their colour scheme or the way they paint. Raven Guard, I've painted a lot of World War II miniatures, I don't want to paint Space Marines in World War II colours. Uh, that kind of thing. So, that's how I scored for paintability. Ease of painting, speed of painting, and do I want to paint the colour scheme, most of all. My second column was Fluff. Hope I don't offend anyone by calling it Fluff. Some people don't like the term law. That's what I'm, I'm going for. Do I like the lore of the Legion? Now, I'm not a super uh, 
I'm not super into the Horus Heresy lore. I'm getting into it more recently, certainly the last six months, but I'm not as well read as lots of you listening to this will be. So this is sort of from the lore that I know, uh, somewhat from 40k, somewhat from 30k, and also for the reading that I have been doing in the last six months. So this is what, what do I think of the lore. And I think for lots of people who know a lot more about the lore in Heresy and have lots of favourite characters and favourite legions from books they've read, this category will be... Um, more maybe more important to you or maybe have bigger swings in numbers to you so i've got again alpha legion i love their law really good uh, salamanders all of their law as i've just mentioned also really good so you know there's some twos in there um some legions where i i quite like the law but I, I i don't love it like thousand suns i've talked about them a few times i do like their law i like the whole we're all psychers kind of thing but I also find the lore a little bit on the boring side as well. Um, I, I couldn't really put my finger on why, just for me. They, they're not. I'm not super excited to play them because of who they are as much as because of how cool, how much I want to paint them. Death Guard, similar thing again. Kind of like Death Guard's lore. I think uh, the story behind them is cool, but equally they are a little bit, I guess, for me, a little bit overdone. You know, it's like one of them legions you hear people talk about a lot. A lot of people use them. They get a lot of airtime in 40k as well. You know, so I, I mark them down a little bit. And again, this is just me, just my preferences. This is a very personal rating system. I'm not suggesting that anyone else should, should follow my ratings at all for doing this. So that's how my fluff category worked. Not a lot of things on my table got a two um, for either of those things. And, you know, at this point, there was a couple that I'd already had two twos. Some, some surprisingly, as I was going through this. So next was playstyle. Now this is, um, this might might certainly be different for for a lot of people listening. For this, this for me is, I I have a thing where I want rules to represent the way I expect a model to play. So, if something is supposed to be big and scary, I want it to have stats that make it big and scary, and it really ruins my immersion when things that are supposed to be very good at a certain thing don't have rules to match. So as an example, Laz Cannons throughout the entire history of every Games Workshop game have pretty much always been bad at killing tanks, which has always really frustrated me because I love the concept of a giant laser cannon, but they've just never actually been very good at it mechanically. And I actually think that's something that's really cool in this rule set, actually, is the fact they've got Sunder now. They get to re-roll their armor penetration. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off topic a little bit. But I like things to match rules to their flavor so this is for me um how the army plays from a sort of law combined with does it is it able actually to match up to what its law does combined with i'd probably say a little bit of a although these scores are only going from naught to two they're not very granular a little bit of competitiveness as well um now i think that I do think that competitiveness is important personally, even though even when you're playing a narrative game, because one of the worst experiences you can have for me is having a cool army that you spent a lot of time on, but the rules aren't very good, the army's not very good, and you put it on the table, but you mostly spend your time taking it off the table again because your army's not very good. So there is an element in this as well of is their play style something that actually makes them worth playing and makes it worth me spending money to go to events go and have games with people that kind of stuff so there's an element of that in here too and that really might not be for some people you know this play style one might be um whereas i imagine most people care about the painting and the law not everyone might care about this category but again you don't like the category don't use it or if you really care about how good an army is you know you might want a competitiveness column up to you so for me uh, there was some in here that I hadn't really thought of when going around in my head. So I gave Imperial Fists a two for this because I really like the whole Imperial Fists thing of we're really good at defending stuff. And their rules in the new game seem to match it as well. They've been given rules to, to, to coincide with it. Their army matches it. You can build an army that feels like it's doing that as well. And generally, I just think their lore is cool. Um, so, you know, they the, the, the lore around the way they operate as a military force is cool so they got a two um and also word bearers also got a two for this which was not something i'd really thought about before i i dismissed word bearers as not something i wanted to play 
But when I started looking at the rules and saw how well the rules matched up to the fluff in the new edition, with all the all the feel no pain and the speed demons and them all being really good in combat and killing people and all that kind of stuff, as well as the sort of psychic power side of things and that kind of stuff as well, I just thought it matched up really well and it actually resonated me quite with, with me quite a bit as being cool. So they got two in this category. Lots of armies sort of got a one. Um, Space Wolves, as an example. I used to own a Space Wolf army. I'm not into them so much anymore. I think their new rules match up fantastically with their play, intended play style. Maybe better than any rule set for Space Wolves I've seen in any of the games. Uh, and similarly to World Eaters, I think, as well. I think that's a, a sort of similar thing. You know, they their rules match up really well to the way you sort of want to play World Eaters Marines, like running around Maniacs, Murder and stuff in melee. That's just not something I'm really interested in in Heresy for whatever reason. So a lot of the legions that are more about getting into into close combat, charging like maniacs across the battlefield, got lower scores from me because I didn't fancy that playstyle. So that's what we did with with that category. Models is the next one. Super easy category. This to explain. Are the models cool? Now lots of things got a two for me in this because I. I just like models, and I like cool models, and Heresy's got lots of them. It really has. I'm sure you'll all agree. And this was not just where their models cool, but where the models I think I was likely to put in the armies for these armies cool. So, you know, for Iron Hands, do I think there are cool tanks I would put in the Iron, in the Iron Hands army? You know, for Dark Angels, I'm going to put some skimmers in the army, that kind of stuff, you know, and not just the specific models but the models i would be likely to use in these armies as well i was trying to think of when i was rating this category so quite a lot of people got a two and quite a lot of people got a zero and very few got ones i find with most armies in heresy and this is probably true of most games workshop stuff for me actually i either love them or i don't i don't really have a middle ground so lots of armies got a two alpha legion who were previously my front runner for what what to play actually only got a one because although their models are cool and i love the scale effect on them i actually don't think they've got models that are like outstandingly great it's just power armor with scales on looks cool is, is is the limit of it so i actually gave these a one for this um which was not what i would have expected before i started thinking about these actual ratings and the last category that i used was one i titled mark sixness Right, and you're probably wondering what this is, or you may have figured that out already. This is how much I think a bunch of Marines in Mark VI armor would fit my image of what this Legion should look like. Now, super clear here to say I have no interest or take no side on the does Mark VI belong in heresy discussion, which has been, you know, lighting up the internet for months. That's not what this is about. I personally think that when i think about heresy i don't think about mark six armor really so for me personally yeah the mark six doesn't doesn't resonate with with every legion so i want to use those plastic miniatures though because plastic's the best customizable kits that i get and lots of support is the best and i'm definitely going to have at least 40 of them from buying the box anyway so i really wanted to use those models and i want my legion i want to choose a legion where I'm going to be able to use those models and not just default to a you know a bunch of resin or older kits and i think that's a reasonable thing to, to take into consideration you you might not want to you might not care you might care about it more i don't know um so i rated all the legions based on whether i thought they were a good fit for, for mark six and i think like a lot of people i came out with alpha legion and raven guard really great fit for mark six i gave them both a two and then there was a bunch of legions I gave a one to because I thought, for me, I could just see them in Mark VI armor and I don't think it would ruin my, you know, vision of what they should look like on the tabletop. So Imperial Fist, Thousand Sons, Emperor's Children, Dark Angels, like a whole bunch. And the great majority of these I didn't give a zero to. So most of the legions I think would fit with Mark VI or at least enough Mark VI to make use of the kits I'm going to have. And so that was the five categories I used, really. That was the things that I thought were most important to me. They were the questions I was asking myself before the spreadsheet to try and figure out what legions I wanted to play. So I added all these up. Uh, I waited till 
all of the previews had been done and obviously we'd seen some more rules leaks so I could finish off the playstyle ones and um, some of those kind of things as well um, and some more of the previews for the for the paintability ones so I could you know so we knew what plastic kits were coming out soon and then I finished off this table and then I just put everything in order and the order you're looking at the spreadsheet now is the order in which I put this so top of the pile uh, so again bear in mind my original thoughts were alpha legion thousand suns or salamanders and i also was sort of thinking about um emperor's children or imperial fists they were also sort of sideways getting into my uh into my brain uh, when i was trying to figure out what legion i wanted to play they were there at the back of my mind thinking oh maybe i could give these guys a go so I put these in order, and as you can see, Alpha Legion did indeed come out on top um, with three twos and two ones. So, you know, I really wanted to paint them, really loved their fluff, thought they two great in Mark VI, and I liked the playstyle on the model. So they came out top with a total of eight. But super surprisingly, and made me really glad that I created this list, Iron Hands came out with an eight as well, um, which I'd not really considered at all before doing this list. And that was because although they got a zero in the Mark Sickness category, because for me, these guys are like almost all in Mark Three armor. I just think it's the way they look the most. Not because of the lore even necessarily that they preferred it, but just because I think they look best when they are more metal. And, you know, nothing's more metal than Mark Three covered in rivets. They got a zero, but for everything else, they got a two. Really great to paint. They look great. There's loads of opportunity for someone who likes weathering, like me, to make them look cool. But they're also quite simple in paint scheme. Two for fluff, because I'm really into the whole cybernetics thing. I like Admech, I like Tagmata, I like Omnisire based stuff. All that stuff, great with me. I love that side of the law. Playstyle seems good. Personally, I'm quite into armies that are tough and stand around and try not to die. That's a good thing for me. And I think their rules do reflect that as well. And I really liked the models, which I'd not really looked at before until I made myself look at all the models going through this spreadsheet. And I really like the uh, Amols, the, their version of Breaches. I really like the Gorgon Terminators. And I also really like tanks as well. You know, I play a lot of World War II. I play a lot of games with vehicles. I like painting and weathering vehicles. They're meant to be one of the armoured specialists, so that really, really worked for me as well. So they got a two in four categories, which was like the highest number of twos. So all of a sudden, I had Iron Hands high on my list, which was really good. Uh, Imperial Fist, which I had been considering were third. Similar reasons to Iron Hands, really. They just fit a lot of the things that I liked. Uh, Thousand Suns were, were fourth, so they were a top runner for me, but when I looked at them, what I really figured out, particularly once I saw the rules, was I didn't, I don't really think that their new rules really fit what I want from a Psychic Army. Now, that's not to say I don't think their new rules are powerful. I do think their new rules are, are quite powerful, but I just, they don't all cast Psychic Powers, right? They've all got, like, Psychic Abilities instead, and I think they're cool models I really wanted to paint although they are also potentially very good, don't really play the way I wanted them to play. So they got a zero in that category, which pulled them down to fourth place. So that's one decision that that really helped me make. I probably don't want to play Thousand Sons because they've actually dropped a few tiers. Similarly for Emperor's Children, I was, I knew they'd be high because I fancied some things about them, but you know, they're not the top of the list. Uh, but you know, the big one, I've mentioned uh, Salamans a few times. They're like halfway down the list. When I actually went through them analytically and looked at the five categories, they, they just weren't really for me. So, in the end, from this list, uh, I decided to play Iron Hands and Alpha Legion was my actual choice in the end. Because the way this worked out was, I was really actually excited to play Iron Hands. I think they're a super unpopular Legion that not a lot of people play. And if you look at the survey that Warhammer Community published today which is the 6th of june 2022 as of the time we're recording iron hands were like the second least popular legion so i thought that the fact that i kind of liked them was was cool and it'd be a good opportunity to play something that not a lot of people play so i thought i'm gonna do iron hands they're quick quick and easy to paint they're gonna be my first army that helped me make this decision and i'd not even considered them before doing this spreadsheet which was really great that this showed me that but i did decide to also 
play some Alpha Legion further down the line a bit. So I'm going to focus on Iron Hands. I want to get the army painted before I try anything else. But I don't expect I'll use any Mark Six Marines in my Iron Hand force. So I'm going to save all those Mark Six Marines. And when I've collected and painted enough points of Iron Hands that I fancy doing something different, I'm going to build those Alpha Legion, those Mark Six guys as Alpha Legion. Uh, I've already got a few Alpha Legion models as well. In any case, I really want to paint the paint scheme. That's not gone away just because of this list. So I really want to paint them. And that will give me a traitor and a loyalist force, which seems really cool. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to do both of them. And this uh, is an example of you know how the spreadsheet helped. So all in all, um, I think this was quite a cool exercise. It seemed a little bit mechanical and cold at first, like deciding based on a, based on a spreadsheet and columns. But actually, it really helped me to define in... Um, in real terms what the things were that were important for me which is the five columns across the top and without going too granular just you know whether those things you know where they fell on my chart of importantness internally so i would uh, definitely advise that if you are struggling with that decision or if you really just can't make your mind up and you don't just want to pin the tail on something and just choose it you give this a go you can change the number and scale. You know, if you want to spend more time on it and go more granular, you could go 0 to 5, 0 to 10, something like that. Change the columns, definitely. Or use the same columns, but, you know, alter what they mean to you. Pick the things that are important to you. Whether it's things that are, are you know, different to how I've chosen them, like paintability to you might just be how quick you can paint them. Or it might be how much effort you can put them into making them look good if you're a really, really good painter. You know, it might be all sorts of different things. The Mark Sickness, Sickness column you might not care about. Make your own columns. Take a copy of the spreadsheet. Add your own columns. Go through the exercise. See what it comes out with. And, you know, you might find that the spreadsheet reaffirms your thoughts in the legions that you were going to play anyway in which case there you go you know you've 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 done the exercise you know that that is the legion for you or like i did you might find some surprises you might find that actually when you think about it there is a legion you hadn't really considered that it turns out ticks all the boxes for you so give it a go I'm not saying it's going to magically solve all your problems uh, but it certainly doesn't hurt and it really does take 15 minutes or something like that as well to do and you can do that just by copying uh, my sheet from Google. It's public, so you can take a copy of it. Um, you just click it. For, if you don't know how to do that, you just click at the top, uh, in the top left menu in File, um, and you just click on the Make a Copy button, and it will make a copy for yourself on Google Sheets. Dead simple. So I hope uh, that that was at least somewhat interesting. I hope it's given you maybe an idea if you are struggling with your Legion choice. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please do leave me a comment, a like, or a subscribe on YouTube. That would be fantastic as well. And in closing, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Argel Tal, which may help in your choosing of a legion. Both sides are wrong. Bye-bye.